Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen Magic Archer playthrough. And so I'm not really sure what else to do here except one of the things death, perhaps. Yeah, I was able to do was collect all of the uh she calls them epitaphs, the uh memories of the monument of remembrance or whatever. So let's check them out. I've wandered lost in this damnable maze for it must be a year now, yet I've found no hope of escape. At times, a voice unknown to me seems to resound at the back of my mind. But my own daily fight for survival has left me with scant energy for pondering such mysteries. From here on, I shall strive to make a record of my journeys, if only in brief. Perhaps a journal of my thoughts might bring some small comfort to me or to any who would follow. Arthikos. I have encountered many fellow wanderers in this queer place. There are endeavors for which I would entreat their aid, yet any attempt to join my cause with theirs has been futile. The others are oft preoccupied with matters of their own. Some regard me with hostility, while others slink away with nary a word. Indeed, many seem to have parted ways with their own reason. Perhaps it is to be expected among those in such harsh environs. But with each rejection, my pangs of solitude take on a sharper edge. He lashed out at me like a wounded animal, malice clear in his bloodshot eyes. I finally managed to calm him somehow, and he told me his tale. He spoke of losing his heart to a dragon, so that he might avenge himself against the noble responsible for his daughter's death. But when I suggested a union, he would not hear of it. Instead, he vanished back into the labyrinth's depths from which he came. I have not seen him since. A woman of scant few years. She said she was arisen too, and in search of armaments from some prophecy or legend. She had a composure far beyond her years, and her manner gave me hope of fellowship. But she refused my invitation flatly, calling the duty hers to achieve alone. Mayhap she had some fear of me. She too I have not seen or heard of since. Perhaps she found the items she sought, or perhaps something else found her first. All the folk I have met in this labyrinth without exception are acquainted of a dragon. They are all arisen. Tis curious indeed to meet so many with a destiny so like my own. Have we all been led here? Who would design or gain from such a ruse? What could await us at its end? Questions I must ponder, but another day. I mustn't let it distract me from the task I have sworn to complete. I am weary from toil and impatience both, and still the whispers continue. I had steeled myself for a hard journey, but ne'er did I anticipate an ordeal such as this. One might think I'd grow accustomed to the isolation, having long since lost my attendant pawn, but it only grows harder to bear. There are rift stones here, but they are all broken, and I shan't expect to see them mended. Now my only companion is that strange voice. That voice, it speaks ever within me, growing louder by the day, frustrating any attempt to ignore it. Even keeping hold of my own thoughts has become a struggle. Is this some moment of impending death? Clearly it is not the voice of my dragon steward. Its monologue is incessant, its words clear and crisp, but I cannot grasp their meaning. Perhaps strangest of all is how little I'm bothered by hearing it of late. Could this voice be attempting to instruct me how to proceed? Might it enlighten me about the darkness in which I've been sealed? Yeah, we heard a voice. We heard the voices of uh, Ulra and Ash while we were going through. But I must not forget, I have a duty to perform. A duty, but what? And also, uh, we heard the voices of, like, the uh, lost and damned. Ah, it is impossible to gather my thoughts. What was the duty I pledged myself to? What was it that once I believed? We'll record it here in case I should ever forget again. I am arisen. Tis my duty sworn to bring everlasting peace to my homeland by making an offering of untainted souls. One thousand human sacrifices. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> but as of yet, I have fallen short of my obligation. I swear again I will honor my promise to the dragon and receive its boon. Oh, from the dragon. I will locate and deliver the souls required, even in the depths of this dark place. Well, there's got to be an easier way, right? I had only to listen. What was once only fog is now as a spring day to my eyes. What was once only noise now is a song to my ears. It whispers the answers before I need even ask questions. Ulra's account. To serve her master and be as she commands. To be shaped in her image. That is the part of a pawn. But my master's image is no longer her own. Defeated by the world's steward, she fell into perdition. Having witnessed her fail to achieve her purpose, my breast was filled with regret. Yet amid that darkness, a spark of light, too, took root. Within my soul, a crude and inchoate mirror to the arisen zone. New strength emerged. I had awoken to love. 
I came to notice the changes within me as his tireless ministration saw my shattered memory slowly mend. I came to love him as my master had before me. Then some years later, fate came on dragon's wings to mark him an arisen, as his master was before him. Though his heart was lost, he seemed more alive than ever. He burned with new purpose to slay the worm and avenge Greta. I became his pawn of my own will. I too saw in this a new calling to love him, serve him, and lend him strength, ultimately to become as him. It was a fate I welcomed gladly. Defeat me or speak your wish and offer up a sacrifice. The second time I heard the dragon's bargain spoke, yet I felt a strange reluctance in its tone as if the ultimatum were given unwillingly. And in that moment I knew it. The worm we now faced was my former master transformed. The revelation tore him apart. Whichever his choice, the, wa the wages were cruel tragedy. A new and dark desire poured forth from his sundered soul. His wish for power to destroy all existence marked me for death. And yet I never blamed him. For as my life was snuffled out, for, <laughs> for as my life was snuffed out, I held firm to my belief. The day would come, I knew, when he, our master, and I, myself, would find redemption. Ashes account. Still a child, I stood amid the ashes of my village. Through the driving rains, two figures came. One, a woman of golden hair, extended to be her hand, perhaps in pity. Greta was the name she gave. A hunter of sorts, she said. Her quarry, the worm. As she spoke, the woman at her side simply stood and watched me wordless. She was a pawn. Come of a different world, the first I had seen. Her air was strange, yet somehow alluring. I chose to join them, this arisen in her pawn. It seemed that, or stand forever in the ruins of a lost life. They offered no words of invitation, yet neither did they turn me away as I followed. As we traveled, I was taught to fight. Greta was my mentor, my mother. She breathed new life into my parched soul. Then came the day the huntress found her mark. She left to face the worm. That day's parting proved final. Her pawn returned, alone and scarce alive. Gone was the bold and faithful Marmadon, who had served as Greta's steel. Her empty eyes stared through, through me now. And what of the worm? Had our mistress felled the beast and stayed calamity? The pawn held no answers. Her mind and soul as broken as her body. Yet no more of the earth was swallowed up. No more was the sky stained black. It seemed the world had been ransomed, or left at least, to fester in the custody of humankind. I was left with a single hope, a single wish, to bring back light to the deadened eyes of a masterless Myrmidon. She was a pawn, I knew it well, not human, not of this land. And what of it? She bore Greta's mien, her face, will or nil. I soon found myself in love. Greta's account. To know the unknown, that was my dream. To walk new frontiers and ancient halls alike, and to see all this world holds. I was prepared to overcome any obstacle that barred my wandering. And so, when the dragon plucked the heart from my breast, I knew only joy. With new power and ageless life, I was free. I knew no greater treasure than freedom. No higher virtue, and yet, what drove me then to take him with me? What ought have seemed a fetter became my greatest joy, my greatest love, and now I haven't even the freedom of my own will. I followed the Arisen's path, past the worm into the halls of the world steward, and there my path ended. In defeat, I was remade a dragon. From the moment I donned a dragon's skin, I was controlled by a single driving urge to serve the Seneschal. This one thought consumed me, its pull inexorable. It was a hunger, an instinctual need. I burned for one who would defeat me, who would succeed where I had fallen. I craved the new arisen. It is man's will that animates him. Can a being devoid of will truly be said to live? Am I alive as I am now? The will that drives this cursed form to seek the arisen is not my own. My will, my love, and all I am is crushed beneath its weight. Its force does not allow me even the luxury of regret. I am near drunk with it, though I war against it still with every shred of what once I was. In my final act as a thinking being, I chose him for my destroyer. The question fell from my lips unbidden. What, what is, is your choice? choice? Were it his wish, I would welcome death at his hands. Nay, I desired it. But his wavering gave voice to a new wish. That the world, its gods, and he himself be damned. My role was set, my actions bound. I existed in that moment solely to give his wishes form. And so I did. I answered his desire, his cry of despair, and his love, my former shadow, was the price. My dreams have died, unfulfilled. 
Though I have neither the means to change that fact, nor the free will to mourn them, perhaps. Perhaps what has transpired will serve some greater use. Let it be as a wedge struck into the chains that bind our endless, hollow world, that those to follow may shatter them. I failed in my quest to explore the unknown, but if it serves some use in ending this cruel cycle, I can believe my life held meaning. In memory of Greta, silent-hearted, dragon-forged, with hair of gold and will of tempered steel, you ransomed me from a village burnt to ash, instilled life and fight. Dearest Mentor, I commend you now to rest eternal. Your servant, bereft of master and memory, I keep now at my side. She lives on, your mirror and soul and body both, and I will not lose her as we have lost you. This I swear before your empty grave. Now choose, stand against me or speak your wish. I'll for your beloved and forfeit, and I shall see your will done. Choose, how am I to choose? No matter my answer, the price is death, a hollow choice. Who am I to stand as the arbiter of two lives, of two loves? What would you have me do? You brought me here, you... If this be the will of the gods, the order of the world, then damn the lot of them! I'll tear the whole of it asunder! Very well, if that be your wish, I shall claim my prize. Stop! No! Raru! Uh, haven't we, like, heard all this? We heard all this. Yeah, yeah, we, we heard these. Okay. Oh, we got a lot of XP for that. Uh, I am level 268. That's a big number. Yeah, uh... And, uh, yeah, Magic Archer is so good. It's like they've got... An element for every this occasion. Is ever concerned for your future, Risen. They don't hardly need buffs at all. And they're like totally self-sufficient. But anyway, um, I'd like for this to be the final episode for uh, Magic Archer. So let's go and... Um, are we even in post-game? No, we're not in post-game. Um, in post-game... Oh, no, we are in post-game. So we already killed the dragon. Let's kill uh, Damon once more. Okay, these enemies piss me off, so let's actually <laughs> kill them. Which we can do as a magic archer, it's not so hard. My shots go around and hit him from the back. Just hit him. so easy. You know what? Just give me a buff. We'll do more magic damage. Is the Wyvern just leaving us alone? That's nice of him. Nope, he's still there. Far away. 
Yeah, come here. Fall down. Ah, don't get up because they hurt you. Yeah, you are to die. Who's this? If you had a magic bow, you'd do more damage with it, with these buffs. But she doesn't. I don't think it would do even uh, more damage in general. Just can't avoid some of these attacks. I missed. I missed because of the cinematic. Oh my god, we staggered him. He got thrown away. It would be nice to get a fresh buff, but I screwed that up. Clap up. We do so much damage in the Crucible of Souls. And he's dead. And the little guy comes out. And you can get the loot. But we have all the loot. And so, uh, yeah, I guess that's all that we needed to do. And that's everything a magic archer can do. And uh, we did it, and we did it all. And so I'm cutting it here. So, if you've been watching, thanks. Like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future uploads or indeed entire series. So, see you on the next one. Bye bye.